the Kenyatta Conference Center in Nairobi, now virtually the traditional starting point for one of motoring's classic sporting events, the East African Safari Rally. For the 26th Safari, 68 crews gathered, none of them to know that this year's was to prove the roughest and toughest safari in history, run at breakneck speed, time to the minute over some of the world's most daunting terrain. A contingent of Mercedes and teams from Porsche and Datsun prepared to battle it out as Timo Mackinnon's Peugeot led the rally off. One of the formidable team of four immaculate Mercedes heavy saloons, though by many it was the Peugeots which were fancied for the team prize. Much lighter, and by far the fastest cars, Porsche 911s from Germany. This is last year's winner, Sweden's Bjorn Valdegard, but no one would lay money on a repeat performance. For in the safari, there are too many variables to make predictions possible. One of the most fickle factors of all, the weather. The earlier date of this year's event could have meant dry, dusty conditions, choking and tiresome. In fact, quite the reverse was to be the case. in three legs, forming a cloverleaf pattern based on Nairobi, spreading first to the northwest, then the south, and finally the northeast. In all, 5,000 kilometers in four days, most of it over far wilder going than this. On leg one, average speeds were set at more than 120 kilometers an hour. But almost from the outset, the story was water and more water. Life too is a hazard for motorists in East Africa. Even at normal speeds, hitting animals is dangerous for drivers. At rally speeds, it can be fatal. Certainly, it's more a case of watching out for game than admiring it. Preston's jacked-up Porsche pauses to cock a wheel. He's safely passed yet another obstacle and on his way. Simo Lampinen's Peugeot, so far lying equal third, 
and only six penalty minutes adrift after the first leg. Already the changing weather conditions had taken their toll. A third of the entries were already out of the running at the end of the first leg. Punctures and broken drive shafts were the commonest complaints, but some cars were sidelined when their engines sucked in flood water and seized. For the survivors, there was everything to fight for. Over rutted tracks and potholes that would shake a family car to pieces, the safari crews battled on at barely slackened pace. But some of the route had become impassable even to skilled drivers with local knowledge of washaways, waddies, and a score more uniquely African hazards. The organizers pruned the route to keep the event going, but there were still plenty of challenges ahead. As many vital tracks became lost in the mud, the route was diverted for part of the second leg onto tarmac. Though even metal roads can become swirling torrents in an East African flash flood. With two-thirds of the rally over, the experienced Datsun team had taken over first and second places. Vic Preston's Porsche, now lying third behind the Datsuns, wisely slows down to pick a safe path through the bush. There's no room for mistakes, but he's got to claw back the minutes. Harry Kalstrom's Datsun snatches the lead from his teammate Altonen, only to rip out his axle and retire. Valdegard headed for fourth place while his teammate Vic Preston's Porsche had suffered a drive shaft failure which cost him his early advantage. Among the leaders, the pace of the third leg remained as hot as ever, too hot for some. But one crew was playing a waiting game. Jean-Pierre Nicolas in a Peugeot was conserving his car and as the pace setters fell by the wayside, Nicolas neatly stole the honours on the very last lap. With 15 heroic finishers to greet at Nairobi, the air was electric. The news had flashed ahead that Nicolas was leading and when his triumphant Peugeot bumped onto the winner's ramp, it was indeed 37 minutes ahead of Vic Preston's speedy Porsche. A resounding victory, but in four days of adventurous motoring, still a slim enough margin to make 1978's the most exciting safari finish anyone can remember. After winning the Monte Carlo Rally too this year, a season for Jean-Pierre to savour, a victory all the sweeter after such a truly tortuous event. <laughs>